Hey guys, today we are going to talk about cotton and wicking and preparing your cotton. So what I'm going to do is go over a few things that I do personally to prepare my cotton and how I like to wick. This is just a video on what I've found works well for me and hopefully I can pass a little knowledge on and have it work well for you guys as well. So these are the things we're going to use tonight. Cotton, scissors, a needle, syringe, juice, and your RDA, and whatever, and mod. So this is the cotton that I use. I get it from Walgreens, and it works great. I don't have an issue with it at all, and I like it because it's consistent, it's organic, it's wonderful, and uh, this is what I use. First thing, get the cotton, and it's in a swirl. You can see it. Can you see that? What you want to do, squash it down a little bit, because the thing's like a cinnamon donut or like a cinnamon roll and you just poke it out and pull just like that now cotton's cheap right so what I like to do is find the part of the cotton that looks the most consistent to me and that typically is not the ends and not this thing <laughs> so I'm gonna rip it off and this is what I have left okay that's all I'm gonna use Second thing is I start to pet the cotton. So I do this to sort of remove any burrs and chunks that may be present in this guy. That looks all right. Third thing, now get the cotton, sort of figure out how much I'm gonna be using I'm just going to tear this guy right down the middle because the coil that I built is slightly big. So now you have this bit of cotton. What I like to do is take the cotton and roll it back and forth in your hands. Now you don't want to squish too hard. What you're trying to do almost is seal the cotton. Okay. Um, it's going to sort of have the same sort of look and consistency as like a dreadlock. Let's see if you can see that. And so there's no, like, uh, there's no, uh, fibers sticking out. It's all pretty smooth. And that looks like a little dingy. So I'm going to do the other side now. Here I have my cotton joints. <laughs> I'm going to twist up one of the ends on each one to make it easier to pass through my coil. Tonight we are going to be wicking on a GP Customs Tahiti Evo and a Mephisto. The build I have in the Mephisto is a 5 wrap of G Plat 22 Elite around a 964th so it's fairly large and um, as you can see it's going to take a bit of cotton to fill this guy up so here we go so what we're going to do is we're going to thread the cotton through the coil now you want to have a little bit of pressure from the cotton pushing out onto the coil um, and with a low ohm build like this which is at a 0 0.10 um, it will almost shrink the cotton so you want to have it be pushing and you'll sort of know you'll find a part that's you say I like that tension of um, your cotton and like this I mean this is how tight it is okay I'm, I can just pick it up it doesn't go anywhere and um, you can see how much cotton I've stuffed in there so that's what I'm using tonight Next, we're going to trim these guys, and so what I like to do is cut them like this, and what you're going to end up with is something that looks almost like a bow tie, and one side is going to be slightly longer than the other. Now we're going to get a syringe, and we're going to tuck this in half, fold it in half, and start tucking, but we're going to start tucking from the rear. So we're going to push this back end in first, okay? And then slowly bring that front in. And we're going to stuff it. We are going to 
tuck this cotton underneath the coil and push it back. Now, what you want to be careful of is to not ruin the integrity of what you have going on here. It's, um, I'll explain that here in a second. Now let's tuck this other side sort of in as well. Now this one's a little trickier because there's not as much to work with. Alright, just like a bow tie. And these guys are puffy. See how they're still puffy? They're still soft too. And you want them almost the consistency of like a spider's nest. And that's perfect in my opinion. And the reason why is once they sort of start wicking, they will keep that shape. And if you allow them to keep that shape, they'll hold more juice and they'll wick more efficiently. And so now we're going to do the same on the other side. So now that this guy is all waked up, um, this is what it looks like. Alright. And what I like to do from here is not to jam all that cotton into the juice well. I like to squeeze it. And so I'm just sort of turning it. I'm just doing this to it. And as you do this, sort of bringing up like these little ears on your cotton. That's okay. That's good. You get your syringe and just tidy up the cotton. If it feels a little loose, you can always stuff a little in. And I actually like doing that more when it's wet. If it's wet, it'll really sort of hold that cotton in there. But you want to have a nice tight pack in there. Not ridiculous, I guess. Not ridiculous. But tight. Now also, I like to push the cotton all the way back to the post. Back there. Just jam it in. All the way to the back. Back there. And back there. That's what I have. See the little spaces surrounding that center post? Those are going to come in handy. So that looks good. That looks good. This looks good. I like the way it came out. Awesome. Darth paper. Delicious stuff. What I'm going to do is put some drops here. Put some drops here. Let it soak in. Don't want to touch the outsides of the cotton, okay? Or I'm not. Trip down, trip down again. Drip, drip. And so this first drip that you're doing here is probably the most important. So now that it's been slightly wet, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to saturate this thing. Still not touching the cotton, okay? Can't stress that. At least this is how I do it, guys. Doesn't it's not for everybody. So now I'm going to burn off all this cotton. I'm going to just let it go. As you're doing this, you'll notice that, you know, your cotton's turning white, which is good because it means that it's wicking. And you want to keep on sort of doing this until you burn off as much juice as you can. After you've sufficiently done that, if you take a look at this cotton, it's sort of created like these little foamy balls. 
at the edge, so it's not like the cotton that you put in there. It's sort of, it's changed a little bit. And what that'll do is it will suck up your juice way better after, so after you've sort of primed it like this. So let me show you. It just sucks it in. It just sucks it in right away. And it's holding a ton of juice. See it? Good. Now one of the reasons why I like stucking, or stucking, <laughs> one of the reasons why I like sticking the cotton all the way against the post underneath the coil is all this space under here, that's producing vapor. It's not sitting on wet cotton, it's actually producing vapor. So you're getting more surface area out of this coil. More surface area means more vapor, guys. Pounding out vapor right now. And it just keeps on going. It just holds a ton of juice and it's good to go. So that's where I'm at with wicking. It's pretty simple. Really, you just want to make it look neat. Uh, if it looks neat, it means it's clean. It means it's consistent. It means that you did a good job. So I'm gonna hit this. It's bombing. Keeps on wicking. So I hope this helped. My personal opinion, I think wicking is more important than your gear. I think it's more important than your coil. Wicking and airflow, that's exactly where it's at. You want to have good airflow, you want to have excellent wicking technique, and good breathing technique and that will make your clouds better that will make your clouds bigger it'll make your juice last longer it'll make improve yeah it'll improve your vape experience good